Today I'm going to show you how I made this warping text animation in After Effects. First we're going to create our text. Warping text. I'm just tweaking the text a bit so that there's no strokes because at the moment there's a stroke. Now we're going to duplicate this and make a stack of text. Once we have the text we want to right click the text layer and then go to transform and then flip horizontal. After this we go to effects, distort and then bezier warp. For this effect we're going to mainly use the top left tangent and the top right tangent. We want to pull each tangent to the opposite side so they cross over and create this effect. And then we just tweak it to our liking. Then we start putting some keyframes further in the timeline. The next set of keyframes won't have any effects on it, so we can just hit the reset button and then that will create some keyframes for us. Now we're going to look at some easing to the keyframes because at the moment they're linear. We just need to add some easy ease to it and then playing around with the speed until we get a flow to the motion that we really like. This part of the process just takes a lot of tweaking and refining the animation and also the warp. Use the other tangents to refine the warp a lot more and just get it in the place where I really like it. I realized it would be better to swap the keyframes around so it starts with the warp. Now for this animation we want to look into the scale because the text gets reversed and we kind of want that to be the right way around so we have to look into that now. We set the width of the scale to go from minus 100 to 100 so that we can create a seamless loop. Combining this with the Bezier warp animation so it flows nicely. This is all about timing and whatever flows with the animation and without it looking odd. We'll need to put some easy ease on these keyframes so it gels together nicely. I'm constantly tweaking the speed of these keyframes so it just feels right. Now we have the scale animation sorted, we can look into the Bezier warp on the end of the timeline. This is just a case of copying the right top and the left top tangents from the first keyframes and copying it to the end of the timeline. Now we have that in place, we have to copy the scale animation we did, but this time we have to reverse the keyframes. I'm copying the same easing from the previous keyframes and pasting it onto the other scale keyframes using ease copy. This will just make everything flow better together. And then we just use the second set of scale keyframes to the position we want. So once we've got all that done, we then want to go to the middle keyframes on the right tangent and left top tangent. And we want to create some warping to it to create some more character to the animation. We can do this by using the tangents and moving them outward so it creates a bulge effect. This will make the animation more dynamic as well.
Now we want to look into making a position animation to the text. To do this, we need to stack more text and we just need to copy the text that we got and then create more stacks of the text underneath. The reason we're doing this is because we want a seamless loop to the animation and this will make sure if we match the type to from the first frame to the last frame that it will be a seamless loop altogether. So now we're going to look into position keyframes for the text. So we go and press P for position. We create a keyframe at the start and then at the end we create another keyframe and we have the text scrolling down a bit. The speed of this animation doesn't have to be fast, it can be slow as you've got a lot of animation going on as well. Then we just have to match the start and end frame of the position so that the text is in the right place for the start and end frame and then it can be a seamless loop. Obviously the positioning of the text is different on the last keyframe but because we've added more text on top of each other it's easier to match. Now it's just a case of tweaking the final animation to how you want it to get it flowing nicely. With the final animation sorted, it's a lot easier to refine the keyframes now because you can pick out spots that kind of need a bit more work and refine them. So yeah, that is the process of how I created this animation and I hope you were able to learn something from this. The Bezier warp effect isn't exactly an effect you're going to use every day but it's quite fun to use in certain situations like this because I just wanted to create a flowing animation and it ended up turning out really well so I wanted to share it with you and yeah this is the end of the video and subscribe for more because there's definitely going to be more and yeah have a good day peace.